Hello, everyone. Hello. How is everyone doing today? Pretty good today, right? Good, good, good. I hope everyone is doing well. I hope my family over in the UK that they're doing well as well. It's like, what, six o'clock your time in the evening, so you're probably getting some dinner or something like that, right? <laughs> and everyone over in the US, um, my family in the US, it's around one o'clock, so we're probably finishing up lunch or getting a late lunch. Something like that, right? Okay. And your teenagers probably just waking up. <laughs> right? So, guys, I was inspired to come on today. Talk about the enemy. The enemy. Yeah. You know, everyone has an enemy or we don't have an enemy. And we hear about this stuff with the enemy all the time. About how an enemy is good for you. Even though we don't like it, but it's good for you. It's kind of like that medicine that tastes nasty, but it really works. You know, you know what I mean? It's it's one of those deals right there. They're actually good for you. But um, I'll wait for everyone to get on. We'll go into it. Why is it good for you? Why does it say, you know, bless your enemies and all this stuff, right? Why? Why does it say that? Let's talk about that today. Let's just dabble inside of that. Okay. Um, if you if you would, could you like and share when you get in? You can like and share. I can be able to see your comments then when you like and share, um, please. And uh, we can get started. Share everywhere. Share in your groups, if you don't mind. Share in your groups. Share in on your page. Share with your aunt that you don't like. Hey, Noreen says, hello, sunshine. <laughs> Noreen popping up. Make sure you share, uh, Noreen. <laughs> Sharing all those fantastic groups you have. <laughs> um, so, anyway, um, you ever thought about that? I mean, you ever thought about why is it that I have to, that it advise me to love my enemies? Why do it ask me to do that? Why do it ask me to do that? I know, I know. A lot of people just don't question it. They just do it. But me, I always question why. It don't make any sense. You got to make sense, right? And then I realized that, oh, the lesson's in it. Okay. So it's not even religion. It's actually universal order. It's the universal laws at work. The, law, the laws. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to get into that. What are these universal laws that it's talking about inside this book? And they wrote it in an allegory way. You got to understand that this Bible, what I teach... It's not religion. So calm down. <laughs> it's not religion. I abstract the lessons from it. I abstract the lessons from it. Because the Bible is basically basic instructions before leaving earth. It's a manual. How to live a happy, healthy, balanced life on earth. It's a manual. But you have to decode it. It's written in an allegoric way. Okay? Oh, Noreen says, I shared. <laughs> he said, I shared. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. So if you your first time here, hit the notification button. You know, hit that little bell that you see right there so you can be notified, that, you know, next time I come on so you don't miss anything because this is going to be some good stuff. So if you would, hit the share button. And if you may need a pen in the pad, we're going to go in today. We're going to go in a little bit, not too deep because it's Saturday, you know, but we're going to go in a little um Hmm, semi-deep, let's put it that way, just to share some secrets, some secrets that you probably go, now this makes sense, it makes sense now. <laughs> um, Carmen, did you share, have you shared yet, Carmen? I haven't seen shared yet, I didn't have seen you shared. Um, Carmen says, um, forgiveness of an enemy is not um, allowing actions to, to affect you anymore, and uh, concentrate on lesson. Hmm. Yeah, we're, we're gonna get into that. And then she said, "I don't let them back in again, though." No, that's right, bro. <laughs> when a person show you who they are, believe them. That was Maya Angelou. She said that. You know. So make sure that you share, Connor. Are you sharing? I haven't seen you share yet, and I saw Noreen share, but I didn't see you share yet. So make sure you share, okay? Common, you know, you're my sister now. Look out for you, brother. <laughs> Over in the UK, you know, you're my sister. All this is six o'clock your time, you know, getting the girls dinner. So hit the share button. It's right there over to your left. If you're on your, on your phone, it's right there to, over to your left. It's the share button. 
Get it. Share in your groups. Cause we know you have groups, um, Carmen. And share with your friends. Everybody. Just hit share. Share with everybody. Okay? Especially in your groups. Let's just share, not share with the jerks. <laughs> but just go ahead and share. It's all good. All right? I really appreciate it. Okay? So, when they tell us, you know, um, in that book, it says it like this. You know, um, if you want to write it down to verify, please do. Um Carmen says this, she says, now we're going to hold her accountable. She said, we'll share for two friends, half making dinner. All right, with this share, they can watch. They can chew bubble gum and walk. They can do two things at one time. They can listen, watch, and stir the pot at the same time. <laughs> you know, right? They can do the same thing too, right? So, yeah, let's do that. So, this share, so they won't miss it. They can check it out later, okay? You got me, Carmen? You got me, right? Okay. All right, so... This is this thing. And for the ones that may watch the replay, you can still share. You know, you can still share. If you don't see that live button, where is that? Uh, right there. If you don't see that live button over there, you still can share it, right? Okay. So this is a good stuff. So pen and pad. Pen and pad. Make sure you have your pen and pad, okay? All right. <clears throat> now, um, this is what it says, I'm sure. Everybody knows about it, so I won't read the whole thing, right? All right, Matthew, the fifth chapter, the 44th verse. Very popular. It says this, but I say unto you, love your enemies. How many times have we heard that? Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Now, I want to punch those that curse me, you know? But it says, bless those who curse you. Do good to those that hate you. Wow, that's deep. And then it says, and pray for them that despitefully use you. The ones that use you? You know, in that relationship you was in, they use you? Hmm. It said, pray for them. Wow. I want to punch them. You know, then it says, and the ones that persecute you. You know, the ones that are talking about you, putting your name down, dragging your name through the mud. It said, pray for them. Now, the secret question is, why? Why, why, why? I always wanted to know why you asked me to do this when everything inside of me want to knock their lights out, want to punch them, right? And then I found out why, why it's so beneficial. When you find out why it's so beneficial for you, it, it makes sense. It's like, oh, I've been asking to level up, to go to another level. So the universe responds, God responds. And then it showed up in a natural way in my life. <laughs> Noreen says, a perfect subject today. Thank you. Yes, yeah, very perfect. Yeah, very perfect for me today. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, it says this. Okay, now we're going to get into that. And so now you got the part that it says, you know, it says love your enemies and all that. We all know that, right? It's, it tells us to do that. Matthew 5, 30, 44, it tells us to do that. Matthew 5th chapter, 44th verse. If you want to write it down, go back and cross-reference, okay? Go check it out. Google it, okay? <laughs> but now why is it you're going to ask me, and you're telling me to do this. You told me to love my enemies. Not even like them, but love them. And then it says to bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Why? It don't make any sense. It don't make any sense. Then it said, pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. I want to punch them. It don't make any sense, right? It don't make any sense. So for the people that just came in, I can't see your comment until you um, hit, hit the share button. You know, just hit that share button. You can share in your groups. You can share all over the place. But. You got to hit the share button so I can see your comment, okay? Because um, I only just know there's more people came in, but I don't, I can't see you. <laughs> so, look, then I found out why. I found out why. I found out why. And for the also the people that are joining in, hit the notification bell. Hit that bell so then you'll be notified of everything. Now, <clears throat> all right, okay? And then share. And then put the hashtag share. Let's your first comment be hashtag shared. Okay, share it, you know? All right, so look, then I found out why. You know that thing called the 23rd Psalms? We all know the 23rd Psalms, right? The 23rd Psalms, when it says, my father, the father, where it says, the Lord is my shepherd, right? Start off like that, the Lord is my shepherd. And then it trickles down into the 23rd Psalm and the fifth verse. Look what it says. It says this. Now, the people that over in the next level, like, Noreen, um, she knows what she knows what the secrets is of it. You know, um, she's over in the next level. If you want to join, the link is somewhere around here. You'll see the link. Okay, 
But it says this, he said, you, speaking of the universe, speaking of God, it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. There, there goes their enemy again. Why would you put a nice, fine dining table before you in the presence of your enemy? Your enemy is right there in front of you. Your enemy is right here. And there's a table right here that separates me from jumping over the table and killing my enemy. Okay, it's a table right here. And he said, I set a table before you. So it's over in the UK. You guys are getting ready for dinner, right? Oh, it's one, one, one. So you guys are getting ready for dinner, okay? When you tell your kids to set the table, they set the table, they put the plates out, they put the utensils, they put everything out, the cups and everything. They put everything out, the glasses and everything. But there's no food on it. It just, the table is set. So just picture your table set right in front of you. It have nice linen, it has nice plates, china, and it has nice utensils, the silverware, the good stuff, right? And then your enemy is on the other side of the table while you're sitting at this table. That's what it's telling you, right? So why would it tell you to do that? It's telling you now two things don't make any sense. You're telling me to love my enemies, be good to those who deprive, to, um, that despitefully use me, and the ones that persecute me, pray for them. All this stuff, right? That don't make any sense. And then you telling me that you're going to put a table before me in the presence of, I don't want to eat in front of you. You know, you're my enemy. Until you find out the secret of it. Guys, the secret of it is your enemies are your food. Yes, F-O-O-D. Your enemies are your food. Now, what do you mean by food? From a spiritual standpoint, your enemies are your food. They're your food. Your enemies keep you dil diligently on what you want. They keep you diligent on what you want. They keep you focused. They keep you focused. You've never been focused until someone said, looking at you, hoping that you fail on your dreams and your goals. They're sitting there just watching you. Like, watch it. She's going to fail. She's not going to get that house. She's, not, you know, she's never going to get a good man. Look at him. You know, you know, he'd never be able to accomplish his dream. Hmm. Look at him. He failed once before. He's going to do it again. You know, those enemies sitting there, they're your food. Let me explain it to you. Let me break it down what it means by your spirit. It's your spiritual food and why you should be good to it. Watch, watch carefully. Now, it says, he set a table before you in presence of your enemy. It was meant for you to eat your enemy, not cannibalize but spiritually this is how you eat your enemies go to numbers numbers write this down numbers the 14th chapter the ninth verse look at all these secrets being extracted out of it it tells us right here it says only rebel not against the lord because we know that right and then it says neither fear the people of the land in other words don't fear your enemies don't have no fear about them, what they're going to do, what they're going to do, how they're going to sue you, or they're going to take you to court for this and that. Don't fear them, right? It says, for they are like bread to us. Mm. Your enemy is like bread to you. That's Numbers 14, chapter 9th verse. That's the King James Version, right? In the NIV Version, it says this, that your enemy, you will devour them. So you're devouring your bread. You're eating your bread. That's what it says, okay? <laughs> Alana says, hello, share, Lana, share. You gotta hit the share button. Lana, Lana Black is in the house. That's my sister over there, you know? Um, so your enemies are like food to you. They're like food, they're your bread. And you know, food is strengthening you, it, it nourishes you. Now let's see how it is in an energetic point of view. Let's see how your enemies are on an energetic point of view. You wanna level up in life, it's gonna be another enemy. You heard of it, new level, new devil. Tell you why. It's designed for you to grow. It's designed for you to grow. Your enemies are like food to you. A plant grow better with fertilizer. We know that. And we know what fertilizer is. It's the crap that smells terrible, but it's nutrients in it. It looks terrible, but it's nutrients in it. Did I just describe your enemies? They're terrible acting people. They talk terrible. They smell terrible. They look terrible. Yet still, they are 
They're nutrients. They're fertilizer for you, right? Um, Sh Shemaine says, morning, everyone. Shemaine, make sure you hit the share button, okay? Everyone hit the share button when you get in, and then also hit the notification button so you don't miss anything. You know, next time you get notified, it is like, hey. So that share button over to your left, hit it. Just hit it. <laughs> Do me a favor and hit it, and then say shared. All right. She said, morning, everyone, shared. So she shared it. She already shared it. Good deal. Okay, thank you, uh, Charmaine. So what your enemy does, they are like bread to you. Now it makes sense when it says, I set a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Why? Because your enemies is your bread. They're designed for you to eat. Now that don't make any sense. Make it plain, Lance. Now watch how the universal laws come into work. The law of sowing and reaping, the law of um the law of, of just like the secret, you know, you know. The law of assumption, right there, okay? The law of attraction, right there. Let me show you, okay? <clears throat> when you have an enemy, you're focused. You're not dilly-dallying around in your mind because you know they want you to fail. So you focus on what, on your goals now. They keep you disciplined. They keep you disciplined on your goals. That's their job. When you go to a new level, you can get comfortable. They call it comfort zone. Your comfort zone can be your danger zone because you're too comfortable. But your enemies shake it up a little bit. Your enemies make it so it's uncomfortable. Now I have to focus. Now I have to really go after my goals. I was just BSing around until these people start talking about me behind my back and start saying how I'm, and I'm a failure and I'm not going to be able to accomplish my goals and I'm not going to be able to do this and that. Now, you got my attention. I'm focused now. Right? No, I'm going to get my goal, right? Okay. Now, you have, I have gave you some scriptures. Matthew 5, 44. Okay, I gave you that. Psalms 23rd, 5th verse, right? So the 23rd chapter, 5th verse, it said, He set a table before me in the presence of my, of my enemies. And then Numbers 14, 9 we found out why he set a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Why? Because it says that your enemy is like bread to you. You devour your enemy. <laughs> uh, Carmen says, feel more focused on my goals now uh, as I have been feeling motivated lately. <laughs> Haven't been feeling motivated lately. Your enemies, boy, they have you focused, you know. Okay, now. Just hop over in the New Testament where it says Galatians, the sixth chapter. So just write this down. Just go cross-reference it later, okay? Galatians, the sixth chapter, the, the um, seventh verse. It says this. It says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man or woman sows, that shall he reap. That's what it says. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. And just think about it. <laughs> uh, Janessa said, good afternoon. Janessa, make sure you share it. Make sure you hit the share button. Janessa is another person that's over in the next level that are winning big time. So hit the share button, Janessa. And if you haven't hit the notification, hit the bell. The share button is over to your left, by, by the way. <laughs> share in your group. Share, you know, with everyone. Okay. All right. So this is the thing. Your enemies kept, you have your focus. Why? Because they're your food. Now it says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. In other words, when you do pray for your enemy, you wish good for them, guess what happened? Good come back to you. What you put out there in the universe, it comes back. Whatever you sow, you reap. Now, you sowed it at a little seed, but you reap as a big harvest. You sowed like, for example, if you're sowing corn. You sow a corn seed, you reap a corn stalk with different corn ears on it. You know, they call them ears. You know, different corn ears on it, right? So you reap a huge harvest from it simply because you wish good on those who wish bad on you. You bless those who curse you. So when you put it out there, it's like a boomerang. You throw it out there. It comes, you throw it out there small, but it comes back big, back onto you. And it manifests itself in a natural way. That is the law. The universal law of attraction. You attract what you put out there up here. You attract it. You attract it back onto you. That's why I said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. So when you wish bad on others because they're wishing bad on you, well, you wonder why you're catching so much hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
you wishing, you cursing those who curse you, when you get it back, and you wonder why you're catching so much hell. You, it said, do good to those who despitefully use you. But this person use you, I'm gonna use him back. I'm gonna use him back. And you wonder why you're catching hell. Yeah, that's why you're catching hell. Hello, <laughs> you're catching hell. <laughs> so, so you get what you put back. You get it back at a higher level. This is what it tells you how you're gonna get it back. Luke, the sixth chapter, the 38th verse. This is what it tells you, how you're gonna get it back. It said, give, you gave it. I bless you, even though you curse me, I bless you. I wish well for you and your family. I hope your kids make it through this pandemic and do well. COVID free. Even though you're wishing that I kissed Corona, you're wishing that I, I failed, you're wishing that my relationship fall into, you wish that I never meet anybody good in my life. You're just wishing so bad on me. Mm. You got to understand the person that wish bad on you, they get it back too. It's just a matter of time. And you have to understand it's karma. You have good karma, you have bad karma. The bad karma comes back onto you just as well as the good karma come back on you. So when they're wishing bad on you, the karma attaches itself to them and it comes back at them on a bigger level. Now you gotta understand this. Karma does not attach itself to the body because we're a spirit being in a body, right? Having an earthly experience. We say that all the time, right? So it don't attaches itself to the body. It attaches itself to the soul. So when you come back in another life form and you haven't fulfilled that karma that you put out on me, for treating me bad, you know, and the people that treat you bad, and you wonder why you catching so much hell because it comes back to you. Hey, Sally, how you doing? <laughs> hey, Elisa, Lisa, make sure you hit the, um, the share button, Lisa and um, Sally, make sure you hit that share button. It's over to your left and hit the notification button so you don't miss anything. You'll be notified ahead in advance. Um, Lisa says hello right there. She's a beautiful soul. And as well as Sally, my Sally. How you doing over there in Cali? You know, she's up in California. Right? She said, uh, what it is? <laughs> she said, uh, yes, it does. Yeah. You know, it comes back on you, right? It comes back on you. Like if you do a share button, like you hit the share button right here, you're supporting this and you're sharing it, right? And then you find someone supporting you. It comes back on you. You know, it, the universe not, is not going to leave you lacking. God is not going to leave you lacking. That's why he says, I owe no man. Why? Because the universal order is in, in play. You put it out, you get it back. Positive or negative. But you get it back at a bigger, bigger frame. And you get it back in different versions. All of a sudden, your kids are catching hell. Why? Because you wish bad on that person's kids or you wish bad on that person, so it's coming back on to you. And yes, your kids are connected to you, so it, get, it hits your kids. It hits you. It affects the whole household. Hmm. You can't pray that off. It's the universal order. <laughs> you can't pray it off. You just got to fulfill that karma. The karma attaches itself to the soul. Okay? So, uh, thank you, Sally. Thank you. She said, share. Alisa, make sure you share, girl. You know, he says, I share. Thank you so much, sweetheart. You know, <clears throat> and make sure you hit the notification button so you won't miss anything. Um, Mary Ann says, true, it's true. It comes back onto you. It comes back. You put it out there, it comes back. That's why it tells you to bless your enemies. Why? So you can be blessed. Your enemies give you an opportunity. They're giving you an opportunity. Because whatever you put out there feelingly, you get back. But it got to be with feeling. Right? It said, as a man think in his heart, so is he. What it means is, as a man think feelingly, he gets it back. Because we think a lot about the ones that we think feelingly, like, oh, you know, some stuff that you worried about, and you was like, I knew that it was going to happen. I knew it. Because you thought feelingly about it, right? The same thing. Your enemy have you so pissed off, so mad. But you bless them anyway. You're going to do it feelingly because you're mad and you're going to do it feelingly. I, you know what? I wish good on you. I wish good on him. I wish good on him that it got it ran out and broke my heart. I wish good on him. I hope that he never experienced what I ever went through. How I hurt my heart and never have to deal with that. And you get that back onto you. It gives it back on you. It's right there in the scripture. It said give. 
you just gave. You wish good on him. You blessed him. You did exactly what it said. It said, bless your enemies. You just did it. You just did it. <laughs> uh, Sarah, uh, Sally said, it's in the Bible too. Yeah. <laughs> Mary said, it's so true. <laughs> what a pretty dog. So anyways, you get it back. How do you get it back? You get it back at a higher level. This is how they explain it. And uh, Luke, the sixth chapter, the 38th verse, write it down, go back and cross-reference it, okay? <clears throat> it says, give. So you gave blessing back to them. You bless those who curse you. Even though you wanted to punch them, but you sat back and go, you know, that's not the right route. I don't want any bad karma coming on to me and my family. I wish good on you. It's hard for me to say this, but I do really mean it. I wish good on to you. So good come back to you because you just sold a karma of goodness. And it comes back onto you. But this is how it's come back. It come back on a whole another level. It says, give and it will be given back unto you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Will be poured out into your lap. Woo! I'm talking about it will pour out into your lap. Then it says, for this is the measure you use. That's the measure that you use. When that person cussed you out and did you wrong and ran out on you, stole your stuff and did you wrong, talked about you, drug your name in the mud, you blessed them. And it said, for with the measure you use, it will be measured back onto you. And that person that did all of that stuff to them, oh yeah, they're getting it back. It's just a matter of time. You may not even see it, but then definitely they're getting it back and they put on that mask, that smile on their face like, I'm just living their life. Mm -hmm. But it tells you right there, Galatians 6, 7, be not deceived. Don't let it on to fool yourself. God is not mocked. In other words, you can't fool the universe. You can't fool God. You can't play no games with him. He said, whatever a man sows, whatever he sows or she sows, that shall she reap. Mm. How's she going to reap it? Glad you asked. Luke 6, chapter 38, verse. It says, good measure, press down. So basically, he's going to give you a lot. That's good measure. Then he's going to press it down so it can put more in it. You know, it's a press down. Then they're going to shake it to see if there's any more space to put some more in it. And put some more in it, those blessings. And then it says press down, shake it together. And then it's going to get to the point it just runs over. The cup just runs over. It runs over. Of all this blessing for you and your kids and your family. And all the stuff that runs over so you can go out and just bless even more people. So tell your enemies thank you. I needed that. You are my 2021 gift. I love you for that. <laughs> yeah, so that's the universal law at work. Even in science, they know that that is scientifically proven. You put an energy out there because everything is energy. You put an energy out of blessing when another person put an energy out of hate. You get it back. The world reflects back off of your thoughts. The world is a reflection of your thoughts. That's the secret 101. <laughs> that's the law of assumption I bless you and I expect it coming back to me that's the law of attraction I attract it whether I like it or not I bless you and I mean it and then it comes back to me in some natural way it shows up in my life it shows up in my case and you wonder why you're just winning and they hating on you and they put more bad karma out for themselves thinking that they're cursing you that's why when people say, oh, this person put a curse on me. I said, no, they didn't put a curse on you. You just believed in what they said. And the universe responded. But when you say this, to, I always say this person, when someone tried to curse me, I said, you can't curse what God already blessed. So I wish well on you. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it comes back to me. And that curse that they put out, it comes back to them. That's just the law. That's just the universal law. So see, it's not religion. This is the universal law. That's it. That's how it works. Marine says, love this, meditating and sending love to enemies, government, to all. Feel good in body. It feels light to just love. That's what we say. Don't even like your enemies. Love them so you can get love back to you. Bless those who persecute you. You see what it says. What it says that? It says that um, 
in Matthew, the um, fifth chapter, the 44th verse. It said, um, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Mm. It said, pray for those who persecute you. That's in the NIV. In the King James Version, I like that one a little better. It's a little lengthy. It says, but I say unto you, bless, you know, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Why? Because you're going to get it back. You know, and pray for them who despitefully use you. You know, you've been used before. You know, the man act like he loves you and use your body. You know, someone, you know, use your money. Someone use your, you know, what you had in your head, all your wisdom. You, t- you train that person at that job. And now they're trying to get rid of you. But you train that person. And now this person turned on you. And then they're trying to get rid of you. Hmm, okay. Okay, you're going to find somebody getting rid of your butt. You know what I mean? It tells you that. It's telling you. And then it says, you know, for those that pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. Why? Why? Why in the hell would I do that? Because your enemies are your food. They strengthen you. They're going to give you some blessings. They tell you. In Luke, the sixth chapter, the 38th verse, write this down, y'all. You know, it tell us. It says, for the measure that you measure will be measured back on to you. You measured out good blessings, good blessings come back to you. You bless those who persecute you, you pray for them. You wonder why strangers come to you praying for you, one of the best for your outcome. Uh, Sarah says, amen. <laughs> so I don't invest in stuff. You know, we're going to talk about that maybe another time, about spiritual investments. Oh, we have some spiritual coins and some spiritual investments. You know, are you investing or are you spending? We may talk about that, okay? So, but right now, remember, anytime an enemy shows up in your life, it's an opportunity. It's a good opportunity. I have two of them. And they blessing me like crazy. And they don't even know it. And they wonder why they keep sinking and sinking and sinking and sinking and sinking. And they're using things to try to make themselves feel good. I'm going to buy me an outfit. I'm going to buy me a this. I'm going to buy me a that so I can feel good. Chasing the eternal carrot. And I just sit there and say, this is good for me. You know, that's what Joshua said. He said, it was good for me that you persecuted me. That's what he told his brothers. You know, the ones that threw him in. I mean, not Joshua, but um, Joseph. <clears throat> um, he said, it was good for me that you threw me into a pit. What was meant for evil, God made it good. Why? Because I bless you. I didn't curse you. I did good by you. Even though you used me, I did good by you. Even though you cheated, I did good by you. You know, somebody that probably cheated on you, probably, you know, you know, at the job, they lied on you, got you laid off and stuff like that, and you're still pissed off. It's a good thing. Look for the blessings in it. Bless them and watch it come back to you. Okay? You know that. Uh, Sally says, I took my brother, um, I took um, my brother chicken soup yesterday that I made for him. And you didn't bring me none? (laughs) Uh, She said, because he has COVID. Oh, so we're going to pray for him. And then he uh, he said, uh, he said lies about me. Oh, he said, he said lies about her and took and took the house away from me. That's my mother left me. The house that her mother left her. But you see how it came back? You know, not, you know, it's, it comes back. Not that I'm wishing bad on anybody. But you see, you do low down stuff. And now you're sitting low down. Now you understand when you see in the Bible when Jesus said your sins have been forgiven. Because they probably did something in the past that caused them to be crippled. Caused them to be, you know, in a bad situation that they need <laughs> Jesus to bless them. That's why he said your sins are forgiven because you did some stuff that the karma showed up on you. And it showed up, you know, like for him. But he would, look what she's doing to her brother. Her brother took her house that her mother left her, lied on her, did all of this stuff. Now he's sitting there struggling for his life. And she blessed him. So this is for you. Uh, Sally, and for everyone else. Write this down. Luke 6, chapter 38, verse. This is what's coming to you, whether you like it or not. It's the reason why you're on here. It's, this is what's happening. Whether you like it or not, this is what's happening. Give, 
and it will be given unto you. You gave, you blessed them. And make sure you bless them. Don't just do it on the outside. You got to do it on the inside. What the inside counts more than the outside. But the outside is just a reflection of the inside. So you can put on the mask, but don't put on the mask. Even though I know it's, it pisses you off. He took your mother's house and lied on you. Still, though, I bless you. I forgive you. And I love you. You're my brother. Do that and mean it. And this is what happens. You gave that blessing. You brought him chicken noodle soup. You're nurturing him. You're trying to bring his health back up. I'm sure you're praying for him. You got your family praying for him. This will happen. You give and it'll be given back unto you, sweetheart. How? Good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over, and pouring into the point it pours out into your lap. That's some serious stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? For the same measure that you measured to your brother will be measured back unto you. And that's just the law, the universal law. That's the law of attraction. You gotta have it. You're gonna have to have it. Even if you know, no, no, I, did, I didn't want looking for nothing. I just wanted to do right. It's still coming back to you. That's the law, man. It, it just works. It's just like gravity. You don't mean to fall, but gravity, you know, it's still gonna make it happen, right? <laughs> you know, uh, Carmen says, um, they do sink. And we think they don't, and we do rise because we're we have been good to them. Exactly, you've been good to them. You've been good to them. I have people in my life that have have is still currently to this day. Laura knows about it. You know, you know, um, I've done me wrong, but I realized back in if you write this down. Um, if you write it down, it's Numbers 14, 9. It says this. It says that your enemies are like bread to us. Our enemies are like bread to us. I realized I wanted to level up in my life. I wanted to grow. But I got a little complacent. But, you know, I wanted to grow. And then in walks a deceitful enemy. I always been there doing me wrong, stabbing me in, in the back for four years. And what do you do when a voice speaks to you in the middle of the night and wake you up and change your whole world and you meet beautiful people like Laura, you beautiful souls on here. And then unlocked and I got onto the road to destiny. So do I say to her, she's watching by some little COVID, you know, covert, you know, secret little fake um, Facebook, you know, profile, you know who you are? And I thank you. It was good that you persecuted me. You and your mom. <laughs> because you're going to get it back and I'm going to get my good stuff. And it's working. It's working really good for me. <laughs> um, Sarah says, yes. Oh, yes. I did it from my heart. Good, 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 good. I'm just making sure. And then she says, um, wow, thank you. I needed to hear that. Yes, you need to join the next level, the job vlog. The link is up here. Click on it. Check it out. It's only a dollar a day, $30 a month subscription. And I'm telling you, people that's in the job vlog that are here, like Elisa, Doreen, they'll tell you it's worth the value. Don't take it from me. Take it from them. And you ever notice that I don't tell you to listen to what I'm saying and trust what I'm saying. I give you references so you can go back and look at it. I give you references. In fact, some people say I give too much, you know, <laughs> but I give you references so you can see it for yourself. So you won't be led by someone who can lead you the wrong way. You can see it for yourself and verify for yourself. OK, um, Noreen says, at what point do you give too much that you are taking advantage of? OK, good question. When you give too much, first of all, the universe won't leave you lacking. If you give and you gave from your heart, just like how um, uh, Sally had said she gave, you know, sometimes we feel like we give too much. You know, you remember you're sowing in this universal garden and whatever you sow or select, you get back, even if it don't seem like it. That's why it told you right here, uh, Noreen, um, Galatians 6, chapter 7, verse, it said, be not deceived. So it may not seem like I've been good and I mean, I mean I've been given and and like how Noreen says right here, um, 
She said, at what point do you give too much and you're taking advantage of, right? First of all, you can feel when you're taking advantage of it. You got to stop. You feel that pause inside of you saying, huh, stop. No, 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 no. That's the higher self saying, uh, time out, time out, time out. Reassess, you know what I mean? And then be not deceived. Don't fool yourself. That goodness that you put out there. Because I know you get mad and you want to stomp around the house with your head all up, stomping around the house and all this, mad and want to slam some stuff, scaring the hell out of Cooper and Rosie. But look, this is what you do. <laughs> I know she's laughing right now, but this is what you do. You know that you have done it like Sally did from her heart. It said, be not deceived. Galatians 6, 7, write it down. 6, chapter 7, verse. Be not deceived that God, the universe, is not mocked. In other words, you cannot fool him. He saw it. He know what you did. Good, bad. Your enemies, what they did, good, bad. And he said, whatever a man or woman sows. And I and you said, I gave. That also she will weep. That's why it says in the scripture that I would not leave you. No, I owe no man. He said, I know I owe no man. I would not leave you lacking. I owe you nothing. Why? Because you always get it back. You put out the BS, you get a whole lot of it back. You put out the blessing. You get a whole lot of it back. I just described. Press down, shaking together, running over that. It comes to the point it falls in your lap. How close do you want it? <laughs> it means it's in your lap. Look at you. You know, your lies, doing your lies and everything now. You had to be pushed, you know. Um, Sally said, and I hope that answered you. Um, Sally says, um, so true, so true. It's a good answer. <laughs> Sound like family feud, don't it? Good answer, good answer. <laughs> so, guys, remember this. Whatever enemy you have, whatever they do, their darkest thing, they even try to use the dog, you know, against you. You know they know you love that dog. They try to use that. Mm -hmm. Remember, you can get mad for a moment, and I understand is that's when you're reacting instead of responding. Go back and look at that. I did put that the other day. I put, are you reacting or are you responding? And what's the difference between reacting and responding? You got to sit still and respond. Go back. Join the group. You know, go to at I am Lance Brooks. And join. Hit the like. you see it. You know, um, you see it. So <clears throat> they do all this stuff. You got to ask yourself, am I reacting or am I responding? I'm not going to react to that. I know the reaction is to just go off and just, uh, and then next thing you know, you <laughs> right there, the cops shows up, the police shows up. So you sit there and you breathe, get back into your thinking. Cause I know you, you get all like, you know, crazy. I'm sure you went like crazy on your brother, uh, Sally. You know, you was like want to choke him, but Sally started laughing, got <laughs> laughing out loud. But you level back off to your head and you go, you know what? And you understand the universal law. This is not going to serve me wishing bad on this person. If I go and smack this person in the face, it's not going to serve me anything good. I have these children to raise. I have, I have goals. I have dreams. I got to let the matter pass and wish, bad, and wish good on them. That happened to me today. That's why I'm talking about it. You know, so as I said, hmm, I need to talk about this. That's why this happened to me today. This morning, early this morning, you know, this happened. And I'm like, I realize this is good. This is good food. This is an opportunity hmm, to bless this person so I can get it back. That I can love this person and get it back. That I can be good to this person that persecute me and get it back. And I can use it right now. Hmm. Now the steam is not there no more. So it's like, where's your steam at now? You meant to hurt me. You meant to try to make me sink a little lower. But just like the Lance I am and the person that you are that's on here, because lightness attract lightness, right? We find ourselves rising up, leveling up. You can't curse what's already blessed. 
when you know and believe that you're black. It's simple. Um, Carmen says, I've just seen my, so I just seen my palm lines when you raise your hand. <laughs> so I just seen your palm lines. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got it strong. She said, they are strong. Yeah. <laughs> I get that a lot. They're strong. Your heart line. Yep. Your heart line, um, you know, attached to your, your head. And yeah, I've been told that you have a strong heart. You know, really hard. You a lot of people are like you went through all of that. You ain't killed nobody. You know what I mean? You said attached to your head and lifeline, which means uh who always think from the heart. Yeah. Good teaching. Thank you, Carmen. You bless me, girl. Yep. There it is. <laughs> Yeah, I've been told that, yes, yeah, really deep, really strong. It's for my purpose. I'm here to serve and serve you guys on the highest level possible. And the ones will tell you over in a job vlog, you know, that they have been served. They have moved to home. Lana Black is over there. You know, you know Lana. Um, she said, I mean, your, your hands. Um, yeah, I understand. Your head attached to your lifeline. Yeah, I know. I got you. <laughs> yeah, and tell those girls I say hello, by the way. <laughs> but guys, so when you're dealing over there, over in the UK, I'm sure you guys are in lockdown, right? You guys have so much opportunity right now. I don't call it lockdown. I don't call it quarantine. I call it readjusting. This is a readjusting mode. This is time to go within and go, okay, what do I really want to do with my life? I always, always beg, you know, how many times have you did this? You always thought like, oh, my God, back in 2017, 2018, 2010, you know, all these years prior to 2020 and 2021, you always thought before all this lockdown and quarantine stuff started happening around the world, you always thought, hmm, God, if I can only spend more time with my family. But I got to hustle and bustle and go to work and all this, come home, hurry up and help the kids with their homework. And then I have to, um, you know, cook and do all this stuff, especially if you're a single father. Yeah, they exist. And or a single mother, you know, um, you're doing all of this stuff. Or you have, you know, you a couple. You're doing all this stuff. It's so busy, busy, busy. And finally, when you get the rest, it's usually a couple hours in front of the television or when you just lay in the bed and be like, just to wake up the next day and do it all over again. And you find yourself doing what the OJ said, living for the weekend, right? You asked and it's given to you in a disguise. It's not like the universe is going to say, hey, I'm going to give you that rest so you can spend time with your family and do those things that you were thinking about when you were sitting in traffic on the way to work on your commute. You're right there in lockdown with your family. Make the best of it that they say, mom, this was the best time ever when they're older. Dad, it was the best time ever when they're older, when they're grown and when they move. They say, I remember lockdown. We had so much fun. We had game night. We had, you know, dance off night. We did TikTok, you know, stuff like that. Have fun with your kids. It don't have to be what they told us that it is. It's bad. You got to look at the news. You have to look at the news. Bullshit. You know, you have to worry. You have to be afraid. No. Because remember, you're sowing. You sow worry, you get worry. You sow fear, you get fear. But if you sow love and fun, you get a whole lot of that too. <laughs> um, Carmen says, I mean, your hand. <laughs> oh, I already read that one. Uh, she says, that's so true. I asked for something to just stop and making the most of it, um, must use it, yes. But we think that, oh, this is a bad thing. This this can be a good thing. It'll be a good thing if you allow it to be. You choose what it is for you. Let the other the house next door to you, that flat next door to you, that home next door to you, that apartment next door to you, your cousin, your family, let them stress out and catch COVID. Because you remember, you keep putting your mind on it. I don't want to catch it. I don't want to catch it. I don't want to catch it. It says right there, Galatians 6, 7, be not deceived. God is not mocked. In other words, I saw you keep watching COVID-19 and looking at the death toll. Hmm. So, 
I brought it to you. Since you keep putting your mind on it, feelingly, constantly thinking about it all the time, so now you got it. Congratulations. Enjoy. You in that respirator, you know? <laughs> it comes back on you. So put your attention on what you want. I will cover that at another time, you know, about this currency that we have. Okay, it flows into the currency. All of us have this money, this this money that we have, but we're not using it properly. All of us have it. Even the homeless guy on the street have the same amount as the Queen of England. Mm, what are you talking about, Lance? Stay tuned for next time. <laughs> um, but guys, remember this. And I hope you guys share this. Someone need this while they sit in a quarantine. Someone need this. They're struggling with something. Please share this. Be a blessing to them. The share button is right there on the left. Share in your groups. Give them an insight that they haven't looked at before. They thought this was just religious mumbo jumbo. But really, it's allegoric way of showing you the universal laws. Showing you the law of attraction. Showing you the law of assumption. Showing you the law of sowing and reaping. Showing you all of these laws and the law of polarity. They give You give out blessings and they try to act like they're walking and they walk in curses. Why? You curse and you be cursed. You curse someone, you're going to get it back. You bless someone, you're going to get it back. So make sure what you get back is what you want. And that's what it means by bless those who curse you. Bless your enemies. Because your enemies are your food. Your spiritual food. Now I understand when it says, I set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. This morning was an opportunity. It was a table set before me in the presence of my enemies at seven something in the morning. And if you're watching by a fake Facebook account just to sneak in on me because I, I blocked all of you, thank you. You bless me. And I appreciate it. <laughs> so, guys, live life on fire. Share this. Be a blessing to others, okay? Be a blessing to others. And watch that come back on to you. Watch it come back on to you, okay? All right. So take care. Have a blessed day and live life on fire. If you're not doing that, guys, you're not living life at all. You're merely existing. And who the hell want to exist? Not me, okay? So we don't went way over 30 minutes, but it was good stuff, okay? So I'll see you guys next time. Maybe we we'll go over the universal currency. Maybe, okay? Take care. Have a beautiful day. But remember this. If you're looking for some coaching, that Lance, I'm struggling with this. Can you help me out? You have all the answers inside of you, and I help you extract it out. Using what the ancient ones wrote in that book that you thought it was religion. It's not. It's instructions. And I have done that with several other people. And they're winning. You know, they're winning. Janessa, she's one. You know, uh, Noreen, she knows. Alisa, she knows. Uh, so if you guys want to invest in the next level or you just want a private booking because you're ready to get out. The question is, are you ready to be healed? Are you ready to get out? Or do you want to constantly look at it? You want to constantly deal with it. Help is here, but you have to invest. We invest in our shoes. We invest in our all this stuff outside of us. Clothes, shoes, you know, all this stuff that you end up outgrowing. <laughs> Charmaine says, thanks, Lance. Have a nice day. You too, sweetheart. Um, all this stuff we outgrow. She said, bye. Have a great day. Uh, Sally says, have a great day. But we invest in all this stuff. You too, Sally. Uh, she says, repeat. She says, repeat what you sow. And you get it back. Start investing in yourself up here, energetically, so you can get it out here. You know, keep doing that. But if you want to keep doing what you're doing, you keep getting what you're getting. But if you're ready to invest and you're ready to, you know, book a private session, just DM me. Just send me a message. Just DM me. Okay? All right? Or just say, hey, Lance, I want a private session on here, and I'll reach out to you. Okay? All right? Uh, and it's no, it's not as super expensive or nothing. It's not expensive. Laura would tell you that. Okay. Uh, Noreen says, so proud of you saying thank you uh, to your enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it. <laughs> you're so funny. Noreen, she says, uh, you truly walk the talk. Thank you, sweetheart. I really appreciate that. Um, guys, have a beautiful day. So if you want, you know, a private um, 
session or something like that, just make sure that you reach out and just, you know, DM me or go, you know, go to the Facebook page and just send me a message. Say, hey, look, Lance, I want to work. I'm dealing with this and I want to get a private session. And we I give you the tools so you can win. And I'll hold your hand and walk you through it. And usually I give more than what you expect. <laughs> okay. So have a beautiful day. All right. Live life on fire. Bye-bye for now. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>